unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Genesis chapter 22, verses 15. Now, for those of you who are Bible readers, if we have to go to the story before, we have an experience where God tempts Abraham and then he tells him, take ye your son, your only son, give him for an offering. And so long and short, he takes Isaac and then he takes him to the mountain. And then as he's sacrificing him, as he's about to stab his son for a sacrifice before God, the Bible tells us an angel appears and a ram comes from a thicket, tells him, do not kill your child. Before we know that, the child is preserved. And uh, when the child is preserved, the Bible says, Abraham calls the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. And it is, the Bible says up to this day, the place of provision, Jehovah Jireh, where God provided himself a lamb, okay? And when God provides in that hour a substitute for the death of his son, for the sacrifice of his son, of course, if I was to go a bit deep into teaching this, literally Abraham killed that boy. Why? Because... In actual sense, if he was not stopped by God, the will and heart to do had already done. Okay, and so by the time Isaac leaves that altar, he leaves that altar a dead but alive man. Okay, and then later it connects later to the mystery, you know, of Christ. We are being given as a lamb, a substitution for our death, for which we deserved to die. But when he dies, we die with him. And when he's raised, we are raised with him. Praise God. But that's not for today. And immediately after Abraham sees and finds that revelation of God's provision, God for the second time brings back a conversation that he had had with Abraham before. All right. And in verses 15, the Bible says, The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, he said, For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, he told him that in blessing, he said, I will bless thee, okay? And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is upon the sea, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed, the Bible says, shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. But I want to throw my emphasis mostly tonight on this blessing with which God blesses Abraham, okay? He tells him, in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, he tells him, I will multiply thy seed. God had spoken this before to Abraham, but God had again spoke it and repeated it again toward him because there was something God was trying to establish. And the beauty is that this is mentioned, okay, in the time of his obedience, okay, for the sacrifice of his only son, which was to be heir for him. And the issue here was the place of obedience, the place of obedience toward God, okay? And then God starts the same conversation he had spoken to the man Saul earlier. I will bless you, I will multiply you, he tells him. And he tells him, and your descendants shall be as the stars in heaven. He had told him before, the promise has been old. The patriarchs knew that. In Genesis 15, 5, he brought him forth abroad and told him look towards the heavens and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. The patriarchs knew that. Isaac knew that. Later on, all the rest of them get to understand that this was an Abrahamic blessing and for the generation that should follow after. But what catches me here is the second mention. Again, when God comes to the man and repeats the same things that have been known over and over and he's telling him, I will bless you, I will multiply you. And he tells him, and in multiplying, I'll multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. Okay? Now, let me show you a mystery here. When you read Genesis 22 verses 17, okay, and you read it from the Hebrew translation from where we get your English that you and I are reading, okay, it would sound like this. He says that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, he says, I will multiply thy seed, 
Huh? Thy seed, the stars of heaven. All right? I'll multiply thy seed, the stars of heaven. All right? So in the original Hebrew, the word as the stars, the word as does not exist. It carries no translation in the Hebrew language, okay? In the Hebrew manuscript of this scripture, the word as is not carried at all. It's almost as though I will multiply thy seed, the stars of heaven, okay? But it's not news that God has referred to us as stars too, because we come through that one star, which is Christ. He spoke of the star that shall come uh, through Jacob, and he spoke of Jesus Christ ultimately as the star. And when he was born, you know the story of Jesus Christ. When he was born, the Bible says that a star was seen in the heavenlies by the Magi, the wise men. Okay? And this is the star that they follow that gives them the direction okay, of where this boy, Jesus Christ, was. And that, to us, was a sort of an example by God of what he would do to represent his child on earth. Christ, represented on earth, also had a representation in the spirit, and God put a particular star in the spirit to represent the person of Christ. The descendants of Abraham come also in this typification of stars, all right? The Bible says the stars fought against themselves in the courses in the days of Caesar, again representing those men as stars spiritually, okay? But when we come in the New Testament dispensation, we also carry a representation of stars in the spirit, but in that one star, Jesus Christ that person, that one star, Jesus Christ. The Bible says in him we live, move, and have our own being. So even though in the physical realm we have our own personal identities, in the spiritual also we carry particular identities as stars in the spirit realm. And there are brighter stars, like Corinthians says, that the glory of one star differs from another. All right, He says there's one glory of the moon, there's one glory of the sun, and another glory of stars. But he says, but the glory of stars differs from each other. There are differences of how we shine according to our knowledge in Christ, okay? Because this light that comes out of a believer comes through the knowledge of the glorious gospel. There is a light that all of us possess because we are believers, all right? But there is a shining with which we shine when we align ourselves to the word of God. Okay? And we shine through a particular glory. There's a song, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory we shed on our way. There is a light that every child of God, every believer, exudes out of themselves because they are acquainting themselves with the word of God. And this word is light. Okay, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. He is the light of the world. This person, Jesus Christ, now in us, is the one that shines through us. And by that, spiritually, we shine as stars. Amen. We shine as stars. The Bible has spoken of how we shine as stars in this perverse and wicked world. So I wanted you firstly to get the point, the understanding, that when you become born again, you also represent a particular star in the spirit, in the person of Jesus Christ, okay? But we acquaint ourselves with this light, okay, out of us as is given to the world by how much we connect to the revelation by how much we build a relationship with the revelation of the person of Jesus Christ. Because there are people who speak the revelation, act like they know the revelation. There are ministers who speak so, so words, big words, okay? But they don't carry the power of what they assume to reveal because they don't have a relationship with that revelation. It flows out of them as a gift, but not out as an experience with God, okay? The believer has been called to have a relationship with this revelation that comes out of us, okay? I would rather not speak save of the things which Christ has wrought in and by me that I should make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. The grace that extends to men to influence and have an effect on their lives to also do what you do or the way you do it and also be what you are in God if indeed it's progressive, if it's indeed adding, if it's indeed increasing, if it's indeed establishing. That is where God has called you and I to be. So now we become these stars, all right? And he has repeated this conversation and he's telling you and I that there's something these stars are communicating, okay? There's something they are communicating. But you see, they're also attuned, okay, to the days of the earth, 
all right? The stars are attuned to the days of the earth. And that's why Job 32 verse 7, it says that let the day speak. In Job chapter 32 verses 7, he said, I said days should speak and multitudes of years should teach wisdom. Okay, there's a place where the days speak and the multitude of years speak wisdom, okay? And in every day, right, when we get into the evening, okay, when it's morning and then it goes into the evening, okay, and that's one day and then the next morning comes through. There's just elements that God has ordained to appear, all right, in a given day, okay? There are elements that God has ordained to appear in a given day. Somewhere in the world, the sun will appear. Somewhere in the world, the moon appears, all right? Somewhere in the world, the stars appear, okay? Now, these are elements that were created to appear, right, in the days of men, right, in the realm of Kronos. But even though they appear in the realm of the times of men, they also have an effect in the spiritual or in the kairoses, right, in the appointed times, deliberately in which God also functions. Although the appointed times of God are above and control the earthly times of men, but there is a correlation with these two times. One is eternal, one is earthly, but there is a correlation at the appointed time. The Bible says, Sarah shall have a child, okay? Yes, it's ordained by God, but it has a calendar date in the realm of the earth. So they have a correlation, except that one, the godly time in the kairos, time is first it is above, it controls the chronos, but they have an interrelation, right? They have a correlation, they have a way they connect together. And then he puts us in the realm of stars and he says, if a child of God should come as a star, all right, there is an appearing of that star every day, okay? There is a representation of that star every day. Okay, he's telling us that when we say in Job 32 verse 7 that let the day speak and multitude of years teach wisdom, okay, there's something God is trying to tell us that each of these carries a certain teaching. The stars are speaking. Like all the elements of the world have a voice, right? The stars, physical, yes, speak, but also the spiritual, you and I, we speak something. Okay? There's something we communicate in the spirit realm. There's a way we communicate in the spirit realm. And the world responds to us according to how we communicate. But we can only communicate according to our understanding. When I was a child, I spec as a child. I understood as a child and I thought as a child. Your thinking pattern defines your understanding and your understanding defines your speaking, okay? And your communication in the spirit realm also defines how the world responds to you, all right? When Jesus walks to a fig tree and he finds nothing to eat, okay, because it was not time for the figs to grow. The Bible says he answered the tree and cast it. Oh, it's not fair. Why would the son of God cast the fig tree? He casts the fig tree because spiritually it was supposed to respond to his hunger. Spiritually, it was supposed to respond to his hunger. Okay, I know this might sound indifferent and strange to people who don't understand the way the spirit realm works or the way the life of God works, okay? But God is not subject to the seasons. The seasons are subject to God, all right? And so Jesus shows us an experience of a man which had the life of God and it turns to this tree. And when it does not give him what to eat, he curses it. And what happens because it was just and righteous by the spirit? It was a cast, okay? The disciples attested to it that this has a cast. It has withered as the Son of God had cast it. Why? Because he could not have turned to eat for food and he was not able to provide. I, and I wish and pray that as the body of Christ, as we continue to grow, we will understand a certain consciousness because many of us, every time we're teaching of the imitations of the Spirit, the imitations of God, many of us only think only of what man has fought from the beginning of the world. All right, which is his moral weakness, okay? So we say, imitate Christ, okay? Many of them only think of their moral standard with which the Christ had, which is important as well. But that is not the only imitation that we carry in God. So if we go deep, if we delve deeper to teach the church about the imitations of Christ, to imitate by the Spirit, okay? One of the primary things that is awakened in this imitation is the consciousness, all right? Your consciousness is awakened to the God thought, all right? For who has known the mind of Christ that he should instruct him? The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. The Amplified says we hold the very thoughts and feelings. We hold the very thoughts and feelings of Christ. Ah, but I don't see that reality. Yes, you cannot plug into that reality by seeing it with a physical eye or physical mind. No, you can only plug into that reality by faith. 
All right. And that faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, as the word of God continues to come through your spirit and it illuminates you, it sets you ablaze with this understanding. You are awakened to a certain consciousness. All right. So when he says, who has known the mind of God that should instruct him? He says, we have, but we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah. And the Amplified says, and we do hold the thoughts, the feelings and purposes of his heart. We hold them. How? By faith. I cannot say that my physical mind has that thought of Christ, but my spiritual mind does. I cannot say that my physical mind is aligned to the purposes of God. That's why it needs a renewal by the weeding of the word. But I can tell you that my spirit man is aligned to the purposes of God. My spirit man has the thoughts of God by faith because what I read I was actually begotten into. And so what has begotten into this word that I read every day tells me who I am. That is why when he refers to the place of reading the word, he says that he that readeth the word, okay, and does not do it is like a man who looks at himself in a mirror, but on turning away, he forgets his very countenance. Because this Bible, this word we read is a mirror. And the Bible says in Corinthians, and as we behold, like in a glass, like in a mirror, the glory of God, we are metamorphosed, okay? But then when you look into a mirror, okay, what do you see? You, because God by Christ has, shared his glory with a believer or some people say oh no Jesus will not share his glory no 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 Jesus said in John he says the glory which thou has given me have I given them so we carry the glory of Christ and as we behold in a mirror this glory of the person of Jesus Christ we are continuously metamorphosing we are changing spiritually into that place okay that brightness that influence of the spirit that every child of God must have but like I said one of the things that is mostly awakened is the consciousness. Because if the consciousness is not awakened, you will have carnal imitations. You will try to do or copy carnally what you must firstly have understood by the Spirit. Okay? You must carry that understanding first by the Spirit. And then you do the imitations of the Father. You understand? That is why when Jesus saw that progress of the church, he said, Ah, these works I have done and greater shall you do as a body of Christ. Why? Because he sees the church progressing in the imitations of the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Now, when he tells us as stars, the days are speaking, the stars are speaking, because if the days are speaking, there are elements within are communicating. We're not now talking about the physical stars. Now we're talking about the spiritual, you and I, all right? But when he was giving Abraham this promise, he gave him a physical example. All right. That is why sometimes when we are teaching about the spiritual stars, sometimes we also allude to the physical, you know, type of this. Why? Because when God was speaking to Abraham, he told him, look into the sky. Tell me if you can number them. Tell me if you can count these stars. For as many as these stars are, so are your seed. Okay. As many as these stars are, so are your seed. Imagine if Abraham had to take time to count these stars. Imagine if Abraham said, okay, now tonight, let me count one group of stars, and then tomorrow morning, let me wake up and continue counting another group of stars. Let me just have a rough estimate, because he has time to himself. I can imagine the thoughts of a man who has lived without a child, forgot to show him stars in the sky and telling him, your descendant shall be a soul. All right? And so I see that if he was to count them, there was no way he was going to number them. All right? There was no way he would count one today and tomorrow wake up and continue from where he was counting to go forward. And I'll tell you why. If you read astronomy, you realize that astronomy has laws, okay? When men study stars, right? They have laws, they're principles. I'm not talking about just those who study them, you know, for sorcery and witchcraft, okay? Astrologers and what, no. I'm talking about basic science, okay? Simple astronomy, it has particular laws, all right? And one of the fundamental laws of astronomy is that nothing in the universe is static. Everything that is attached to the universe moves, all right? And astronomers can tell you, they have proved this times without number, that no star stays in one place in a space of 24 hours. Simple astronomy teaches that stars move every day. Where you see one star today is not where you're gonna see that star tomorrow. And as interesting as can see, if you study precisely, if you take time to study them precisely, astronomers will tell you that they move every day and make a complete circle around the earth in one year. They make a revolution around the earth. 
in one year. In other words, in a space of one year, that star comes back to a particular spot that it was probably one year before. But it has a continuous movement. Stars move continuously, all right? Meaning that if God has given you as a representation of stars spiritually, even though you might not see physically how you move and advance, there's always something about the child of God that moves every day. The Bible says that his mercy is anew every morning. All right? What is the essence of God's mercy? God doing good to a man is new every morning. And whatever he's doing for you every morning has to push you from one place to another. Physical stars move every day and make revolutions every one year. All right? That is why every time we get to the end of the hour, we have meetings of prayer. Why do we pray at the end of the hour? Because spiritually, something should be happening to take us to the next spiral, to the next circle of our influence in the spirit realm. We're leaving one level and realm of circumference to the next level of realm of circumference. We're leaving one level of glory to the next level of glory. But like I told you, all of this sort of has a circular move. Right? Like your watch moves, your chronos move, your times move, right? There is something that always brings you, but to bring you back to that point does not necessarily mean that by the time you come back to that point, you are at the next level, okay? You can return back in that circle of the same point, but on a higher level. You understand? God can elevate you spiritually. And these are activities, right, that happen in the spirit realm. He's saying, okay, as the stars, your descendants, in Genesis uh, 22, he said, and your descendants, right, your seed, which are the stars of heaven, right? Your seed, the stars of heaven, they represent stars, okay? And like physical stars move, spiritual people, born again believers, children of God, the seed of Abraham, every other day moves. And how do you know you're the seed of Abraham? Galatians is clear. If you are Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed. If you are Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed. That means you are the seed of Abraham because you believe Christ, which also comes through that typification of representation of the star in the spirit. What I'm trying to tell you here is this. You might look at your life and think that everything is stuck, but underline the word think. And you might think so because you are looking at things with a physical eye, underlying physical eye. But because your physical eye sees a stuck area, a stuck experience, right? Your mind thinks it is stuck. God is telling you it's not possible for you to be stuck. It's not possible. The principle says that every star moves every 24 hours in the physical. Spiritually, it means also every day you do, and I'm going to get to that. Right? But also, there's a place of the brightness of this star, right? the luminosity of this star. What makes it bright? People who study stars, they also have a definition and an identity with how bright these stars are. Okay, How bright is it? And if you want to know how, I have a teaching on that. You can go look out the teaching, how to make your star shine. I have taught how to brighten this. I've given a biblical teaching on the brightening of this. All right? You can get the teaching. It will help you. But back to what I'm trying to say. that. Whether you know it physically or you don't know it, whether there's a physical evidence that you are moving, okay? I'm trying to awaken you to a consciousness that is older than you, bigger than you, bigger than your challenges of the hour, that whether you see this or you don't, you are advancing every other day spiritually. It's the mandate of God if he has classified you as a star to make sure that every other night you're moving one place and making revolutions from one level of glory into another level of glory and it looks like an upward spiral but something is growing on your life. Oh yes, you might see it go down like what you're seeing physically but I want to awaken your consciousness to understand that God has not ordained the believer to go downward, but it's possible for a believer to go downward because of what they know and how they understand. The battle is here. The understanding is here. Everything, the thought patterns are here. It's how they are drawn and it's how men interpret the word. All right. Now the Bible says in Psalm 68 verses 19, he says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. He's Read the word, daily. He has used the word daily. He daily, oh, but I don't see it. But you ought to. You ought to see it before it comes. And let me use the word ought because, again, like I say, 
that physically, astronomy, like I said, stars move every day, right? And make circular movements. They revolve around the Earth. Spiritually, if you are also a representative of a star, through Christ, you're moving every day. The star that is written in scripture, even of the person of Christ, was a moving star. It was not a static star. That means you are a moving, it's a principle. It's a principle in the law of astronomy, right? Now, because it ought to move, right? It doesn't matter whether your physical self does not see. It doesn't matter whether you have no physical evidence of you moving. Spiritually, there is evidence, right? You ought to be moving spiritually, all right? I'll liken it to when Paul says in Hebrews 5, 12, in the time when you ought to be teachers, right? You require again that a man teach you that which becomes the first principles of the oracles of God. In times when you ought, you ought, right? When Paul says in the time when you ought to be teachers, he's saying that with whatever has been provided in the spirit realm, according to where you are supposed to be, you are supposed to be teaching. But then the cycle has been reversed to a place where now you require or need one to teach you again that which be the first principles of the oracles of God. That means there's something wrong in your understanding and the wrongness of that understanding has twisted your flow in the spirit and defined wrongly the place where you ought to be. So when he tells believers in the time when you ought to be teachers, when you ought to be teachers, he's saying that in the total sum of things, eternity and the word of God, the spirit realm judges that with this being available for you, with that being available for you, for this being available for you, you ought to be in this particular place, all right? But he's disappointed with the folk then because they are not where they are supposed to be, okay? When God says, you ought but you are not it means he has provided for all that you need to be but you have not attuned yourself for it to be it is that simple is that simple it's the same thing that for you to see things stuck and things not moving in your ministry in your family in your relationship in your business because you don't see that it does not mean that god has not provided for it no, in the spirit realm, he continues to do what he's supposed to do to get you to your next level. You can either connect to it and move on. Are you hearing me? But every man has their own appointment with God to reconcile what he has been loading you with, with the manifestation of that thing in the physical realm. That's the essence of manifestation to Fanero, to show forth, to make manifest what you already have in the spirit and God has given you by the word. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing the heavenly places in Christ. He has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness through Christ. Are you hearing me? Now, every other day, he's loading you with a certain level that aligns you to these things that he has given already by Christ. He's giving you the spiritual graces for you to connect every other day he gives you the spiritual positioning for the things that he has already given you all right because every other day comes with a new challenge it comes with a new thing it comes with a new grace it comes with a new mercy are you hearing me and god's essence is simply to hold you up every other day Okay, that's why the Amplified Version again in Psalm 68, he says that blessed be God, which always carries us. He carries us. He carries us day by day. But the translation there for carrying means he lifts you up to exaltation every day. Every other day, there's something God is loading you up for your exaltation. Every other day, he reminds you, he positions you back to a place where he says, you know, you might be funny today, but tomorrow again, I'm going to reposition you again to the things that I've already ordained, that I've already put, that I've already created created that have already aligned for you and they're already waiting for you and every day I'm loading you with these benefits I'm loading you with these benefits what are these benefits these benefits are the positionings of the spirit that are supposed to you know connect you to the things God has availed to you but how many people actually know that reality that know this beyond their mind and can go into their spirit and connect to that reality and connect with these things that God has given them the Bible says he loadeth us every day with benefits. Tomorrow, God is going to align somebody and lift them to a certain place of exaltation that at that particular point, they will tap into what he has already ordained for them to have.
You miss that day. The next day, he puts another opportunity. You miss that day. The next day, he puts another opportunity. And as long as you live in this world, there will always be an opportunity. As long as you still breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, there will always be an opportunity that aligns you to what God has already given you. That's the caring. He doesn't carry us to pamper us as babies. No, he carries us to mature us into the place of heels, the mature children of the spirit, that we might connect to everything that has been ordained for us. Yes, there's somebody saying, oh, I think I'm stuck in this financial area. You are stuck because you don't know the truth. God has said spiritually, you move. Every day you move. Every day you are carried by the wind of the Spirit from one level of glory to another level of glory. Whether you knew it or you don't, now you know. And the truth that you know shall make you free. The truth that you know shall make you free. That's why somewhere in John he says, and every man shall be saved by his own word. Okay? You're not going to be saved by the thing inside me. No. You're not going to be saved by the thing that is seated in your neighbor. No. You're going to be saved by the word that gets into you clings into your spirit and connects you to your destiny, connects you to the things that God has dealt with you. The challenge with our generation is we have thrown away the responsibility of the individual Christian. We think it's in my apostle, it's in my prophet, it's in my evangelist, it's in my pastor. No, it is in you. Now to him who is able to do, to do, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you dare to ask or think according to the working power that works in your apostle, in your teacher, in your pastor, in your evangelist, in your prophet, in your papa. No, in you. Our responsibility, like the book of Colossians says, is to present all men perfect in Christ, not to share our perfection with them. I cannot share my perfection in Christ with you. I cannot share my experiences with you. All I can do is to give you the word. I can only give you the word. And with that, the Holy Spirit will draw your own experiences. Even if I give examples of my own experiences, they're only to the end that they will give you your own experience. But my experiences are for me. They are for my destiny. They are for my calling. They are aligned to who I am and my identity. God is not coming to make cheap copies of great originals. You are supposed to be the greatest of you. There should be and will never be anyone like you. If you mess it up, God will choose another. But if he chooses another, he'll choose him also as him, not as you. Because everyone God has defined a certain distinction on your life as a child of God. Every star, the Bible says, deferreth in glory. We defer. We defer. But now it says, I load you every day with benefits. I intend to load you every day with benefits. Oh, so why is it that I don't see these things? One primary thing is that many people so much look on the outside. They look on the physical, the carnal. Their eyes are blotted from the vision of the spirit. It's like when we say the brightness of the star, the luminosity of a star, the magnificence of a star. When we say that a star is bright, when we say that a star is bright in magnitude, okay? It's not just so much about how much this star illuminates only. There is another side of the ability of the power of vision to see that illumination, okay? to see that illumination. If I have the brightest light, okay, and I cover it with multiple layers, okay, of material, of clothes and all these things, there can be a darkness in that room. But the darkness is not in that room because there is no light in the room, but there is something that is covering that light. Okay? But it's one thing for that light both to shine so bright, but the power of the eye to see that vision. You cannot take a blind man outside and tell him, look at the stars. What are stars to a blind man? Okay? And that's when you understand the power of grace. So when we're talking about prevenient grace, it's the thing that shines in you, but also gives grace to them which behold you to attest to that luminosity, to attest to that brightness, to attest to that glory. He says, you shall meditate on these things and give yourself wholly to them. The Bible says that your profiting will appear unto all, will appear 
to all will appear. There is a grace of God that is available, not only to make this thing shine out of you, but to make men see that there is something different about this man. To make all men see that there is something different about this woman. Yes, people pray, but there is something when she prays. Yes, people worship, but there is something when she worships. Yes, people preach, but there is something when he preaches. Yes, people minister, but there is something when he ministers. Yes, people see, but there is something when he sees. There is just something that will start to draw that identity in Christ through you that makes you that light in the dark world. It opens. The Bible says there is nothing that is hidden that shall not come out into manifestation. But when it comes out into manifestation, when the veil is taken off, are you hearing me? When the coverings are taken off, when the things are rent in two, and this light comes out, there is a grace that God has to avail for men to see. And that is why I prophesy upon you in the name of Jesus, that there is not going to be a way where the excellence on your life shines and the potency on your spirit increases and it shall be ignored. I decree and I declare to everyone listening in the name of Jesus that you will shine as men will attest to God on you. That you will shine as men attest to the glory of God on you. That the brighter you shine the more men will testify and say that there's something on this man. There's something on this woman. When you enter those interviews, they'll say there's something on this woman. When you enter those businesses, they'll say there's something on this man. When you go to do that project, they'll say there's something on this man. When you go to do that consultancy, they'll say there's something on this man. Why? Because God has not simply lit you as a light to hide you. No, 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 no. The essence of the grace of God is for the completion of the God who both stars this light, okay, into illumination to make sure that it catches the eye of those it must catch because the destiny of his son must get to the next level. The destiny of his daughter must get to the next level in the name of Jesus. What I tell you, it doesn't matter whether in COVID you don't have a job. It doesn't matter whether your businesses are stuck. It doesn't matter whether your careers are stuck. It doesn't matter whether you're not bringing in money. There is a provision that God has ordained for you by heaven and will come whether this week or next week or after COVID, I don't care. But when it comes, God will prove to you that you never lost anything. For when there is a casting down, the Bible says that you shall say that there is a rising up and whether the devil wants it or not, you will still go upward and upward. Pastors that are watching me, prepare for bigger seats in your meetings in the name of Jesus. Business people, I decree and I declare for those of you that are watching me that when when you go back walking, you'll have a fold bigger than you could have done in one year. In the name of Jesus Christ. You people who have careers and jobs, I decree and I declare that for anybody listening to me, I don't know your faith, I don't know where you are in life right now, because faith is a now experience. It is a remar thing. Now faith is the evidence of things not seen, the substance of things hoped for. And I'm telling you that God will move whatever has to move to make you better than you were before and is going to give you stuff you could not have done if you had just continued in your daily business even if this season of covid had not come if you believe it shout amen glory to god glory to god so take your eyes off men take your eyes off the economy Take your eyes off who will help you and who won't help you. Put your eyes back on God. In Jeremiah 17 verses 5, the NIV, he says something in the fifth verse. He says, this is what the Lord says. Not Apostle Grace. The Lord says, okay. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Because when you put your faith in man, when you put your eyes on man, when you put your trust in man, the Bible says your heart turns away from God. I've had believers, you know, in conversations, oh my God, economies are going to be affected so badly. Our businesses, they might never heal. Let the world speak that, not you. Those are speculations of carnal men. Who will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of men or are you going to believe the report of God? Oh, you know, after COVID, some of us, we have no businesses. No, 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 let the world say that. Not you, the believer. You, the believer, will have bounty. God knew this season was coming, and in your shifting spiritually, he also accorded a mercy that would load you with benefits in this season. They might not be seen. Are you hearing me? If you are earning 10 million every month, and for two months you have not earned it, I decree and I declare that you are going to come out of COVID and earn hundreds of millions. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. 
that. Because our trust is not in what they speculate for economies to be. God told us this year that this is our year of redemption. Why in the time when COVID is here? Because it's trying to say, look, a lot is going to be lost, but I saw that this is there to redeem. Oh, I understand it. He knew that this season was going to come. But when he knew that this season was going to come, he put a compensation for you and I. And he said, look, I'm going to bring a sacrifice in the stead. There are things I'm going to do and take places for to make sure that there's a better tomorrow for you. He told us this is the hour of redemption in a time when the world is failing, when economies are failing. He's saying, I will redeem your economies. In the time when men are dying, he's saying, I will redeem your life. In the time when things are going out of line, he said, I will redeem your lines. In the time when ministries will close, he says, I will open yours, Father. I'll expand yours, Father. Again, I say, say that it's working for us differently in the name of Jesus because we did not stop to be moved by the Spirit because seasons came. Sickness seasons came. Bondage seasons came. Poverty seasons came. We are still moving from glory to glory and transversing in the name of Jesus. And so we refuse to trust the reports of men. We refuse to trust the reports of scientists. We refuse to trust the reports of economists. We choose to trust the report of the Lord. He says, cursed be the man which trusts in men okay and depends on flesh for his strength whose heart turns away from the Lord your heart will turn away from the Lord if you trust in men but our trust is in the Lord are you hearing me and verse 6 he will be like a bush in Westlands he's saying that's exactly what happens to a man who trusts in what men say he says he will be like a bush in the Westlands and he will not see prosperity when he comes because he thinks it is supposed to come a certain way by how men have projected it. No, our prosperity comes by revelation. Oh, shut up, That means the man, his eyes will close from revelation. And the Bible says he will not see prosperity when it comes. And he will dwell in the patched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. That means if you continue trusting how the world goes, you will live in the most desolate places spiritually and consequently physically. But he said in verse 7, But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. What did he say? He said, he said, He will be like a tree that is planted by the water, that sends out its roots by the stream. The Bible says, And it does not fear when heat comes. It does not fear when COVID comes. It does not fear when jobs are stalled. It does not fear when businesses are closed. It does not fear when flights are not moving. It does not fear when the income didn't come out today for its leaves will always be green it means God says regardless of whether men are working or not there's a portion for you that is bigger than what your job can give you there's a portion for you that is bigger than what your finances can ever bring there's a portion for you that is bigger than the longest time they could ever close you even as a minister and the Bible says and it has that person that tree that individual that believer has no worries in a year of drought and never Never fails to bear fruit. He has no worries in the drought and never fails to bear fruit. Whether we are meeting physically or not meeting physically, Fanero is bearing fruit every day. Whether your business is closed or not, you must put it in your head that there's something aligning for you anytime it's going to come and it's going to be bigger than even your physical self could have ever imagined, even if you had worked tirelessly for 20 hours every day that is the portion of the children of God that is what we believe to see in the land of the living in the mighty name of Jesus that's my faith that is what I believe believe it believe it believe it open your mouth right now and start to thank God for what he has spoken to you Shatalabayaka Jirerebo Salabatala you are doing something new every day of my life. You are touching me afresh every moment of my life. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I you were doing something new in my life.
God is doing something new in your house. God is doing something new in your businesses. God is doing something new. God is doing something new in your careers. God is doing something new and better in your ministries. God is doing something new and better in your marriage. God is doing something new and better in your children. God is doing something new and better in your finances. God is doing something new and better in your projects. God is doing something new and better in your finances. God is doing something new. You have to believe it. If you're a pastor, believe that your church is going to double this year. It's going to triple this year. It's going to go up 10 times in the name of Jesus. I don't care. If you're a businessman, speak words on your business. Speak on your career. If you're a career person, speak on your job. If you're a job person, say this is the year of my promotion in spite of what is happening. In spite of what is happening. He says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. It is working right now in the mighty name of Jesus. It can only be so and not otherwise. In Jesus name we have prayed <laughs> and believed. I am excited for what God is going to do in your time. I'm excited for what God is going to do in our time. I'm excited for what God is going to do. We're not worried about the heat that goes. We're not worried about the drought. We're not worried about the famine. We're not worried about who is... No, 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 no. God, God is our trust. God, in whom we hope, is faithful to him be the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're moving every day. Say it with your mouth. Say, I'm moving every day. I'm shifting and aligned. I'm carried by God every day. Say it into the position I must be every day. Say it for the things he has greatly arrayed for me before. Say, I am blessed in the name of Jesus. Say, I'm positioned every other day. I'm carried every other day. I'm loaded with benefits every other day. I'm coming out stronger than I went in. In Jesus' mighty name. Health is yours. God is healing the sick. God is healing the sick. Receive your healing right now in Jesus name. Amen. And if you're there and you've never given your life to Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Repeat these words after me, please. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins and was raised for my glory. I receive you tonight as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.